Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is the ultimate guide to wireless PC VR Quest 2 gaming. We are really going to be getting into the details today. I'm going to tell you how to optimize your home Wi-Fi setup. I'm going to talk about the advantages of Oculus Link or virtual desktop and every setting you will need to change to have the perfect experience. Now I've put hours into this to optimize it for myself so I'm delighted to share it with you today. So first thing, we need to perfect your home Wi-Fi setup. The first thing you want to make sure is that you're connected to your Wi-Fi's five gigahertz channel. Now most internet setups have two Wi-Fi channels. You've got the two and a half gigahertz channel. that is a bit slower, but travels better over longer distances and does better at getting through walls. Next up, you've got your five gigahertz channel that is just much faster. It brings you that sort of blistering fast speed, but it does degrade over distances. This is what you want your headset connected to. Now it's very possible that you'll only have one Wi-Fi network showing. If that's the case, then you need to log into your router settings and just make sure that you tick the little button next to the five gigahertz option. Next up, you wanna think about your router. Now this isn't an essential step, but it could have a dramatic impact on your overall internet performance. Most internet providers will provide a very low quality router when you sign up with them, but the Quest 2 is compatible with Wi-Fi 6. So if you upgrade to a Wi-Fi 6 router, you could see a dramatic increase. You will also get a big increase in your general Wi-Fi speeds and the coverage throughout your house. Personally, I use a Netgear Nighthawk RAX50. It's awesome and it really made a massive impact to my setup. When you're shopping for routers, a little hint, if it's got AX in the name, it's probably a Wi-Fi 6 unit, and if it's got AC in the name, there's probably a Wi-Fi 5 unit. The next step, we wanna make sure our PC is connected to our router via ethernet. Now don't stress, if your router's downstairs, your gaming PC's upstairs, and there's just no way you can connect the two. I was actually in that exact situation and I found the perfect solution. What you want to do is source a Wi-Fi extender. You can grab an extender, connect that to your network, and then plug it in near your PC. You can then connect your PC via ethernet to that extender. That will enable your PC to converse with your headset in a much lower lag situation. Now you don't need to drop loads of cash on these extenders. Personally, I got by for a long time using one of these really cheap offerings from TP-Link. Now it didn't have the same capacity as my Wi-Fi router, so I got quite a lot slower speeds overall, but because the PC could communicate with it directly through ethernet, the wireless VR performance was awesome. Now that's what I ran with for a long time, and I would just unplug it when I wanted general use, run through my Wi-Fi and get the full speeds, then plug it in every time I wanted wireless VR. But to save doing that every time, I then upgraded to the Netgear AX1800. That is a really fast extender, it's got full Wi-Fi 6 capabilities, so I've now got it right across the network. That means I get full speeds upstairs, so I see well over 600 megabytes per second when I plug in. That is awesome, and it means my setup is so fluid. I'll leave links to all my kit in the description. It really does make a dramatic impact on your performance. So I did all that and then when I went on to my application, it still said your wireless PC streaming content may be degraded. So something clearly wasn't perfect in the setup. Now there was one extra step I had to take that I hadn't accounted for. What you need to do is log into your router settings as we described earlier. Basically, you need to type in your router's IP address. You'll get that written on the back of the router or on the box and then log in via the admin settings that will again be written in the same place. Once you've done that, you want to scroll down to your five gigahertz option and below that, you should see the option to select a channel. Now, basically, there are a large number of channels that are open to you, but they're also open to all of your neighbors. So you want to find a channel that is completely free of interference. You could use a Net Analyzer app that will tell you exactly which channels are being interfered with, or you can just run a quick speed test and then select a new channel and see if that speed dramatically increases or potentially decreases if you've moved over to a more congested channel. Below that channel selector, you should also see a second option to select either a mode or restriction for that channel. Basically, this is kind of like the bandwidth selector of the channel you're going for. Think of it kind of like a pipeline. The wider that pipe is, the more data can be sent but it also widens out your channel so it means that you could get more interference the wider you go. Now I was lucky enough to find a completely free channel where I could push that bandwidth right up to the top. This made a dramatic increase to my performance. I lost that little message saying the performance could be degraded and I had the full potential of my wireless content unleashed. Make all these settings changes and not only will your wireless VR content be greatly increased but so will your general internet usage. So next up we have to consider which platform and you've got two options to go with. You could go with Airlink 
which is completely free and it's built into the Quest 2. It's a really good option if you don't want to spend any cash and you just want to jump in. But for the best experience possible, I recommend you go with Virtual Desktop. Virtual Desktop is a paid app. It was kind of the OG Quest streaming app. Way before Air Link was even a thing, we had Virtual Desktop and it still holds up really, really well. It's created independently from Oculus, but it just gives us so many more options to play with that I think it's a much better experience. I actually ran a poll in a community of Quest 2 users with over 150,000 people. I asked the only people that had used both applications respond and just said which one do you prefer? Overwhelmingly the response was that virtual desktop was the way to go. The reasons given because you can optimize it and I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. So let's talk about optimizing those two experiences. First off Airlink. If you want to play through Airlink then you just need to make sure on your PC you've got the Oculus app open. Go over to settings and you should see the option for Airlink. Make sure that is turned on. After 48 hours of not being used that will turn itself off again so you might need to re-enable it. After you've done that, jump over to your Quest 2, go to Experimental Features and turn on Airlink. Then from the home page at the bottom left, you should be able to click on it and enable Airlink. That will connect your Quest 2 to the PC and you should be able to see your desktop. You are up and running. From there, there is only one setting that you can play with, and that is your bitrate. Basically, the lower you go, the worse your visuals will get, but the lower lag you'll get. What you want to do is find a nice little balance of the two. For me, I was able to pretty much max it out and get a very smooth experience with some pretty nice visuals. I did still get the odd little stutter every now and then, so I pulled it back just a touch to give myself that little bit of breathing room, but your mileage may vary depending on your hardware. Virtual Desktop has a lot more settings to go with, but you can get a fantastic experience out of it. So to play through Virtual Desktop, ensure you've purchased the app and it's installed on in your Quest 2. Then make sure the Streamer app is enabled on your PC. On the Streamer app on your PC, there's just a couple of settings we can play with. First off, the codec, you'll have to choose between H.264 or HEVC. HEVC, also known as H.265, is the slightly newer codec. It's supposed to be able to send more data using less bandwidth, but in my experience, it seems to add latency of about 10 milliseconds. So depending on how your overall setup is, it might not be ideal. Personally, I like to leave it set to automatic, so it will decide for me which codec is best. The other thing that I like to tick on this page is to automatically adjust bitrate. That will allow the streamer app to dynamically adjust your bitrate to give you the best performance continually as you go on. This really does make life a lot easier and I recommend you use it, but you don't need to because I'm going to tell you how to optimize for it regardless. So then we move over to the settings on the actual headset. First of all, you've got your general settings page. This relates to primarily your desktop usage, so when you're not in game, but there's a few things here that we need to look at. Here, I would push things high because lag is less of an issue and you just want the best experience you can when you're working with your desktop. It'll make your icons easier to work with, text will be easier to read, so really I would push it as far as you can. Maybe you want to dial back your frame rate a little bit so you can focus on the picture quality because you're not going to be moving that particularly fast just around the desktop. But the key changes are in the streaming section. So on your left hand panel, there is a section that says streaming. Click on that and it will bring up the streaming settings which really affect your gameplay. The first option, VR graphics quality, relates to the graphics quality of the games when running through Steam. Here, you want to optimize to your PC. Basically, how powerful is your graphics card? How hard can you push the games? For me, I've got an RTX 3090 so I can go to ultra without any real struggles. If you've got a slightly less powerful card, then maybe think about going around high or medium, just like you would with any gaming content, set it up so you can have a smooth experience. From here on, most of the settings we play with are likely to have a bit of an impact on lag. So what you want to do is look in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. There's a button that says show performance overlay. If you tick that and open a game, you can make your changes with the game open. You'll be able to see a live readout of what happens to your latency. You can see your current FPS, you can see your latency, and you can see what is driving the latency. VR frame rate, I like to set it to 120 FPS because I want that really smooth gameplay. If you're struggling for bandwidth, you might need to pull it back a little bit so you can get a bit more visual quality without eating through so much data. Personally, I think 90 is perfectly smooth and 72 hertz works really well for many games, but I wouldn't go much lower than that in almost any circumstance. For VR bitrate, I've got it set to auto, and because I've done so much optimizing of my home setup, it's given me the full 150. So I'm getting that perfect picture, and I'm still getting a rather lag-free experience. 
If yours is much lower than that, then you might need to pull that bitrate back a little bit. If you've got it set to auto, your PC should be doing that for you. But if you want to perfect it, pull it back and see what impact it has on lag. Anywhere between 0 and 50 will be very playable. You can go slightly higher than that and it will still be a good experience, but that is kind of where I would aim. You want to get within that ballpark and then push your picture quality as far as you can. The next option is sharpening. I've played with each setting on this and I've never actually noticed the difference, so I tend to leave it 100, but you can leave it at 50 and just go straight down the middle, I'm sure it'll be fine. Your next option is gamma, which will make the image brighter, but I find it also tends to wash it out, so I don't go much higher than one, I think that's a nice little midpoint. The next option, synchronous space warp, is really useful. Basically, that means if a game is too demanding and you're not getting that full frame rate, what it will do is aim for half the frame rate, but then fill in the gaps with the extra one to get you the full amount, and it tends to be really accurate. This technology has come along a long way. It's so much better than the early Rift outings where you get loads of visual artifacting. You don't really get that anymore, so I tend to leave it as automatic. The next option, sliced encoding, saves latency by transmitting encoding and decoding each frame in slices. It only works in some apps and your mileage may vary depending on hardware, but I do leave it on and find this to be the best experience. Video buffering I don't use. The idea of this is that it eliminates stuttering by increasing latency and pre-buffering your image. For me, I don't really get much stuttering, so it's not an issue. If you are having a very stuttery experience, then maybe you just accept that extra lag and deal with it. I tend to find it's about 10 to 12 milliseconds extra, so if you're getting quite a low lag experience but full of stutters, that might be the option for you. The next option is colour vibrancy, now turn this off. I had this on for ages without even realising. When After the Fall first came on, I thought the game had this kind of red filter over it because everything looked really weird when I played it on my Quest 2, but when I played it on a PC VR headset like my HP Reverb G2, it didn't look like that at all. It turns out it was all because I had this setting turned on. It really affects things, I don't know what the advantage is, so just turn it off. The same goes for increased video nominal range. I don't think it has a very good impact on the visuals, so personally I leave it off. And that should be you all set. I found that with these settings and that Wi-Fi setup I've described, I have an amazing wireless PC VR system now. Generally, it makes the Quest 2 my go-to PC VR headset. It really has a massive impact. If this video has been of help to you, then do me a favor, hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this in the future, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.